checks to ascertain whether an engine overhaul is really necessary. The most common reasons for which an engine is overhauled are insufficient power, high engine oil consumption, low engine oil pressure, mechanical knock, noise. Apart from poor engine compression pressure, the loss of power can also be due to faulty fuel system, plus slippage and binding brakes. If you have ascertained that these are not on account of this, you can go for compression check. Before starting the test, ensure that the battery and self-starter are in good condition so that the engine cranking speed is 150 to 200 RPM. Recheck the cylinder head bolt for specification. Check valve clearance on both inlet and exhaust as per specification. Warm up the engine to operating temperature 85 to 88 degrees centigrade. Remove all injectors and fit dummy injector into press cylinder and connect the compressor gauge with flexible pipe to dummy injector. Ensure that the clamp for dummy injector is properly tightened and vent knob of the gauge is closed. Crank the engine with self-starter. Ensure that the stock lever is full so that diesel does not come out from FI pump. Read the compression pressure on the gauge and record the same. Loosen the vent knob so that the gauge needle returns to zero. Then, tighten the knob again and repeat the procedure on the other cylinder. The compression pressure should be 24 plus or minus 3.5 kg per centimeter squared in each cylinder for a healthy engine. Maximum variation in compression pressure of cylinders should not exceed 1.5 kg per centimeter squared. If the compression pressure of one or more cylinders is below 19 kg per centimeter squared, it is generally found that starting trouble, loss of power, increased fuel and engine oil consumption, and heavy smoke necessitates engine overhaul. To ascertain whether the leakage of compression is from the valve or from the piston rings, pour a little oil into the defective cylinder and check the engine compression pressure as described earlier. If compression pressure improves, where in the piston ring and cylinder bore is indicated. If compression pressure is unaltered after pouring oil, it indicates leakage past the valve. And if the compression pressure of two adjacent cylinders read on the lower side, it may be due to a blown cylinder head gap. For high engine oil consumption, low engine oil pressure, and for engine knock or noise, the normal procedure should be followed as described in Farm Track Tractor Training Manual, referred to page number 34. The engine has been taken out from the tractor and is mounted on the work stand. Before starting dismantling, the engine oil has to be drained. So, unscrew the drain plug of the oil sump with a one inch ring spanner. After the oil is drained, refit the drain plug. Take the oil filter wrench and remove the hydraulic oil filter from the pump. Then, unscrew the hydraulic pump mounting bolt with a 9 by 16 inch socket and impact wrench. Remove the pump. Dispose off the gasket. Loosen the engine oil filter with filter wrench and then remove it by turning it with hand. Loosen the adjusting bolt of adjuster. Remove the fan belt from the pulley first, then from water pump and the alternator. Loosen the mounting bolt of alternator, remove the same and keep them properly. Pass a screwdriver to the water pump pulley and with a ring wrench of a half inch, unscrew the four mounting bolts. And then, for fast removal of bolts, use an impact wrench. Loosen the screw of rubber clamp of ventilation tube. Unscrew the bolt from the cover fuel injection pump timing and remove the tube. Unscrew the mounting bolts of the water pump assembly with 5 8 inch socket and impact wrench and remove the water pump assembly Unscrew the mounting bolts of exhaust pipe assembly with socket wrench of 9 by 16 inch and impact wrench. Take the help of ring wrench to open. Then unlock the lock washer of manifold bolts, 
and with a socket wrench of 9 by 16 inch and an impact wrench, unscrew the mounting bolt. Remove the gasket and dispose the same. To remove the overflow pipe of the fuel injection pump, unscrew the banjo bolts with a ring wrench. Unscrew the overflow valve on the pump assembly and remove the pipe. Next, loosen the nuts on both ends of the high pressure pipes and remove all the pipe from the injectors. Put a protective cap on each injector. Remove the injectors one by one after unscrewing the bolts. Check the washers and keep the injectors in a proper place. Plug the injector holes with a piece of cloth to prevent any foreign material from getting inside. Next, loosen the bolts of the intake manifold with a 9 by 16 inch socket and impact wrench. Then, remove it from the cylinder head and place it properly. Dispose off the gasket. The next step is to unscrew the cover assembly of valve rocker's mounting bolts with a socket wrench of half inch and an impact wrench. Lift the cover and place it on the table. Unscrew the bolts of connection water outlet with a ring wrench of half inch. Remove the same and the thermostat valve and keep them properly. The next step is to unscrew the rocker shaft bracket bolt with a 3 4 inch socket and impact wrench. Remove the assembly and keep it properly. The next step is to remove the push rods and place them in order. They should be returned to the exact place because of their wear pattern. To remove the cylinder head assembly, take a socket wrench of 3 4 inches and an impact wrench Unscrew and remove all the pen bolts. Lift the cylinder head assembly and keep it on a table. Remove the cylinder head gasket and dispose of the same. Block the flywheel and with the help of SST number EF0800, remove the crank pulley. Unscrew the three mounting bolts of hydraulic pump steering with a socket of 9 by 16 inches and impact wrench and carefully remove the pump. Unscrew all bolts of cover assembly front with a socket wrench of 9 by 16 inches and an impact wrench. Use screwdriver for separating it from the gasket and then remove and keep it properly. Before removing the timing gears, check the backlash between idler to camshaft gear, idler gear to crankshaft gear and idler gear to FI pump gear. Unscrew the three mounting bolts of the FI pump gear with half-inch ring wrench and then remove the gear. Check all the timing gears for any damage and replace if teeth are found chipped or having excess backlash. Now, loosen the mounting bolts of idler gear with 7-8 inch ring wrench and then remove the gear with adopter. Now, remove the four mounting bolts of the FI pump assembly with a 9 by 16 inch socket and handle. Use universal joint for easy access to the bolt. Use double end wrench for the front bolts for unscrewing. Take out the FI pump assembly. The FI pump and three injectors should be sent to an authorized micro dealer for overhauling and decalibration. Turn the engine vertical. Before removing the flywheel, first, Loosen the bolts of flywheel assembly with socket of 25 by 32 inch and an impact wrench and then remove the flywheel and keep it on the table. Loosen the three mounting bolts of the rear plate with a socket wrench of half inch. Remove the cover plate of cam shop rear cover with a screwdriver. Loosen the bolt of hydraulic pump drive gear and remove the gear from the cam shaft. Now loosen all the bolts of the oil sump with 9 by 16 inch socket and impact wrench and remove the sump and keep it properly. Dispose off the gasket. 
unscrew all eight bolts of rear oil seal retainer with a socket wrench of 9 by 16 inches and impact wrench and remove the retainer. Dispose of the gasket. Unscrew the bolt of adopter assembly cover. Remove the assembly and then with a plier remove the oil pump shaft and gear assembly. Turn the engine upside down. Check the end float of camshaft with a magnetic stand and a dial gauge before removing it. End play should be 0 0.025 to 0 0.028 millimeters. With the help of a ring wrench, loosen the two mounting bolts of oil pump assembly and remove the same. Take care of intermediate shaft. Next, align the thrust plate bolt of camshaft. Unscrew the bolt with a half inch socket and handle. Remove the camshaft assembly from the bore by rotating and pulling the same. Take care that lobes are not damaged. Unscrew the four mounting bolts with a socket of 9 by 16 inch and impact wrench and remove the plate engine cover front. After the removal of cam shaft, remove all the tappets in sequence. Remember to keep them in the same order. Turn the engine up. Before removing of piston assembly, remove the wear ridge at the top of the cylinder bore with a ridge cutter. This will help in easy removal of pistons and will also prevent damage to the piston ring groove. Now turn the engine vertical and then turn the crankshaft again so that the piston you are working on is at the bottom of its stroke. Loosen the conrod bearing cap bolt by using a 11 by 16 inch socket and impact wrench. Tap the cap with mallet and lift the cap with the bearing shell. Now, place plastic sleeves or section of hose over the stud to protect the crankshaft journal. Turn the crankshaft till piston is at the top of its stroke. With the help of a hammer handle, carefully push out the connecting rod and piston assembly from the cylinder block. Match the number punched on each con rod and the cap. Remove all the pistons one by one and keep them in a wooden box to prevent damage. Turn the engine again upside down. Before removing the crankshaft, check the end float with a dial gauge mounted on a magnetic stand and record the same. Then loosen all the main bearing cap bolts with a socket and impact wrench. Remove all the caps and lift the crankshaft and place it properly. Procedure of checking. Using precision measuring gauges will give correct measurement and special service tool will facilitate easy removal and assembly. Impact wrench facilitates fast loosening and tightening of nuts and bolts. Clean the cylinder bore thoroughly and check where by means of a bore gauge. Set the bore gauge to zero and then measure the bore in four places in two directions, parallel to the engine and crosswise at the point of about 70 millimeters from the top of the bore because of carbon deposit. Record the measurement on the engine inspection sheet given in Farm Track Tractor Training Manual, page number 45. Farm Track 60 bore can be re-sleeved to standard sizes bore dyer, otherwise the worn out bore can be re-bored to oversize. Oversized piston is available. In case the bore is not worn out and can be reused, the glaze on the cylinder bore can be removed with a glaze breaker for fast bedding in of new piston rings. The honing angle should be maintained at 45 to 60 degrees. Check the cylinder block surface for unevenness 
with the help of a straight edge and a feeler gauge. Flatness of top surface is 0.08 millimeters in any length of 152.4 millimeters or 0.152 millimeters overall limit. It should be checked on the two sides and two diagonal. Check all push rods for straightness on a surface plate with a feeler gauge. Discard the bent push rod. Check with micrometer the outside diameter of the idler gear adopter and draw with the telescope gauge and micrometer and record the measurement. Replace the idler gear bush for an oversized one when maximum permissible play between bush and trough is exceeded. Remove the gear from the cam shaft, place it on cool bead blocks and with the help of a dial gauge and stand, check the runout. If it exceeds 0.05 millimeters, replace it. Check the camshaft loads for any damage. Replace it if found necessary. Check the gear teeth of the oil pump. Replace the camshaft if gear or oil pump drive gear is damaged. Check the camshaft journal diameter with a micrometer and record the same. Check the cam bush inner diameter inside the cylinder block with bore gauge. Replace the bush after having ascertained excessive clearance between the bush and the camshaft journal. Machine the bush following fitting to the repair signs. This can be done at the machine shop. With the help of valve spring pressing tool, press the spring and remove the key. Remove the tool and remove springs with the retainer. Take care of rubber cap while removing. Remove the valves and clean them. Check valve condition. Burnt and eroded valves must be discarded. Slightly pitted valves can be reused. Place them in order, then check each valve stem diameter with a micrometer. Stem diameters are in three oversizes and valve guide bore is to be rimmed accordingly. Valves with scored and seizure marks must be discarded. The valve guide bore can be checked with the help of dial gauge and a magnetic stand. Set the dial gauge to zero and then move the valve stem from side to side and read the dial gauge. The bore can also be checked with a telescope gauge. Insert the gauge inside and lock it, then measure it with micrometer. Check valve seat and its angle. If damaged, the seats can be replaced with new ones and cut with a valve seat cutter to the required angle. Finish by lapping with coarse and fine emery paste. Check valve leakage with kerosene or petrol after lapping. Valve seat inserts are available in three oversizes. Now, check valve springs for cracks and squareness. Place it on a surface plate against a tri-square and with a feeler gauge, check the squareness by passing the feeler gauge and measure the gap. And then, check the free lengths with a vernier caliper. Measure the spring tension with the help of a spring tester. If the measured value is less than the specified limit, valve springs must be discarded and new ones installed. The keys of valve spring retainer should also be checked and replaced if found damaged. Dismantle the rocker arm assembly. Remove the rockers from the shaft. Inspect the shaft for any steps. Replace, if any. Inspect the rocker arms for surface step. If it has a light step or scoring, it can be ground on a grinding stone. If step is severe, the rocker must be discarded. Check the rocker inside diameter with telescope gauge and micrometer 
and replace them with a new one if worn out. Check the rocker shaft diameter with micrometer. Place the rocker arm shaft on a V-block and with a dial gauge measure the runout. If the runout is more than 0.6 millimeters, change the shaft. Now, clean the cylinder head and check head flatness with straight edge and feeler gauge on two sides and two diagonals. Maximum permissible out of flatness of cylinder head face is 0.08 millimeters in length of 152 millimeters or 0.15 millimeters overall limit. If excessive, repair by resurfacing it. Ensure that after resurfacing, this will not reduce the head thickness less than 1.5 millimeters from the valve head to the refinished surface of the head. Tappets should not have any cracks, peeling or pits. Replace tappets which show excessive wear, ovality, taper or seizure marks. Remove minor surface damage with use of emery paper. Keep the tappets in sequence as they were removed and return to same bore because of their wear pattern. Check the tappet bore in the block with telescope gauge and measure with micrometer. Check the piston for external damage and cracks. Then hold the piston with con rod in a vise. Use a soft jaw or wrap the con rod with shock cloth. Remove the rings with ring expander. Clean the ring groove with ring groove cleaner. Select the right cutter to clean the groove and clean the piston with brush and diesel. Do not use wire brush on the ring groove. Check all the ring to groove clearance using a new ring with the help of a peeler gauge. If it is too large, discard the piston. Remove the surf clip and tap the piston pin out from the piston. Measure the piston diameter at the piston skirt. Subtract the piston diameter from the measured bore diameter and if the clearance is greater than specification, try another piston or rebore the cylinder for an oversized piston. Check the piston pin diameter in the center with the help of a micrometer. Replace it if worn out. Check the pin bush in the con rod with the help of telescope gauge and micrometer. The pin should fit in the bush slightly snug. If it is too loose, replace the bush. After pressing the new bush in the con rod small bore, drill a 6.35 mm diameter hole through the bush. Ream the bush to match the pin. Now check the con rod alignment in the alignment gauge for bend and twist. Maximum twist of the con rod 0.3 millimeters. Maximum bend of the con rod 0.1 millimeters. Check the removed crankshaft for any crack with the help of a magnifying glass. Also, check for journal scoring or signs of overheating. Mount the crankshaft on a V-block and measure all the bearing journals with the help of a micrometer. Measure the ovality and taper at three sides in the perpendicular planes. Regrind the journals in the course of repair to the next underside. Please refer Farm Track Tractor Training Manual page number 74 or the dimension. The extent of regrinding depends on the most worn journal. After regrinding the journals, check the fillet radius which is very important. The steps formed after the regrinding will lead to breakage of crankshaft due to stress concentration. Refit the main bearing caps with the bearing shells. Retalk the main bearing cap bolts as specified. Check the main bearing inner dial with the help of a bore gauge. Measure the bore in three directions to find out clearance between main bearing journals 
and bearing inside diameter. Record the same in the inspection sheet. If the clearance between the measured bearing inside diameter and crankshaft journal diameter exceeds the specified limit, the bearing must be replaced. Now, fit the big end bearing shells in the conrod and hold the conrod in the vise. Measure the bearing inside diameter with the help of a bore gauge. Discard the bearing if bearing is excessively worn out. Also, replace the bearings which have signs of scratches or cracks or metal peeling. Replace the bearing to next size as per the ground crankshaft journal. Wash all parts of oil pumps and solvent and dry thoroughly. Dismantle the assembly. Measure the clearance between outer rotor and pump housing. Between outer and inner rotor. Check for scoring mark on both rotors. Check top clearance with feeler gauge and straight edge. Check flatness of the surface with straight edge, resurface if found uneven. If the measurement is not within the specification, install a new assembly. Check the pressure relief valve spring tension. It should be 27.2 millimeters under 4.85 to 5.4 kg load. Tools should be placed properly in allocated places for easy access. Clean once again all parts before assembling. Maintain exceptional cleanliness throughout reassembling the engine components. It is extremely important that all work is done in completely clean location. The engine assembly will start after discarding the worn out parts. Always use genuine palm track parts. Remount the engine block on the work stand. Clean all the oil passages and use compressed air for drying. Lubricate the tappets and fit them in cylinder block tappet bore. Check free movements of tappets in the bore. First, apply shellac on the plate engine front cover and then put gasket on it. Positioning it on the block with dowel, tighten the four number bolts to a torque of 1.7 to 2 kg meter. After assembling the camshaft gear on the shaft with spacer and thrust plate, tighten the bolt with plate and washer to a torque of 6 to 8 kg meter. After lubricating the camshaft, insert the same into the ball. Align the thrust plate and then Tighten the two bolts and washers on the thrust plate to a torque 2 to 2.5 kg meter. Camshaft should rotate freely. Once again, check camshaft end float with dial gauge. It should be between 0 0.025 to 0.18 millimeters. Fit the main bearing shell and lubricate. And then place the crankshaft. Rotate with hand to ensure proper seating. Fit bearing shell on the main bearing caps. Lubricate the bearing. Ensure that the locating lug on the bearing shells are on the same side. Mount the main bearing caps and tighten the bolt with a 3 4 inch socket and impact wrench in sequence of center bolt first and side bolt crosswise. Before torquing any bolt or nut, set the torque wrench to the required torque. Torque the main bearing cap bolts with a torque wrench to 20 to 21 kg meter. The crankshaft should rotate freely when rotated. Check crankshaft end float. 
It should be between 0.1 to 0.2 millimeters. This can be done with the help of magnetic stand and dial gauge. The engines of the latest Farm Track 45 and 60 models are fitted with new pistons which have re-entrant pipe combustion chambers. The pistons also have side oil drains. The piston combustion cavity design is changed from the open bath type to re-entrant type for better bolt swirl and homogeneous air fuel mixing for better combustion. The change will reduce the smoke level, carbon deposits and improve fuel efficiency. The life of the engine will also increase. Due to the side oil drain, the consumption of oil is reduced considerably. The cylinder head air intake passage is modified to helical port to get a better swirl of air. The intake valve head diameter is increased and the valve head profile and the face angle are changed for the intake and exhaust valves. The intake manifold air passage is modified correspondingly. The components are not interchangeable with the existing farm track 60 engines. However, the complete set of parts are interchangeable on the tractors prior to BSN 259838. The fuel injection pump is also changed and the fuel injection pump timing is changed from 24 to 16 degree BTDC. Accordingly, the flywheel markings are also changed. Taking care that the dimple mark on the piston crown is aligned with the dimple on the connecting rod, place the small end inside the piston, aligning with the piston boss. Insert the piston pin in the piston connecting rod assembly with the help of a drill. Insert circlip on both sides of piston pin in the circlip groove. Rotate the circlip for ensuring proper seating in the groove. Keep the opening on the bottom side. Turn the engine vertical. Before fitting the rings on the piston, check the butt gap, taking care that the ring is squarely placed while pushing it with a piston. Check the butt gap of each new piston ring in the respective bores at unworn area with a feeler gauge. Hold the piston and connecting rod assembly in a vise. Wrap a work plot around the connecting rod. Ensure the end gap of the oil ring coil expander is placed 180 degrees to end gap of the oil ring. Then keep the coil expander first on the oil groove. Then, with the help of a ring expander, fit the oil ring in the same groove. Always ensure that top marking on the compression ring is to be fitted toward the top side of the piston. If it is fitted the other way around, the engine oil will escape through rings to the top and result in excess oil consumption. Fit the second compression ring. The top ring is a chrome-plated ring and is to be fitted in the top groove only. Repeat the ring fitting procedure on the other remaining pistons. Arrange the butt gap 90 degrees from piston notch on the piston crown for oil ring, second compression ring 180 degrees from oil ring, and first compression ring 120 degrees from the oil ring, so that butt gaps are not in one line. Ensure that the crimp on the ring compressor is facing downwards to prevent it from going inside the ball. Tighten the ring compressor on the piston. Loosen and remove the connecting rod nut and remove the cap. Fit big end bearing shell in the connecting rod big end bearing seat. Fit the pulley bolt to rotate the crankshaft. Ensure that the dimple on the connecting rod is facing towards the front of the engine. Lubricate the bearings and inside the cylinder bore with clean engine oil. After lubricating the bore, Push the piston into the ball. Rotate the crankshaft with handle and keep pressing the piston with a hammer handle until it is at BBC position. Ensure that the locating lugs on the bearing shells are on the same side. Fit the connecting rod cap on the crank pin with the nut. Tighten the nut with a 9 by 16 inch socket and impact wrench for faster tightening and then torque to 10.5 to 11 kg meter. Repeat this with other pistons and connecting rod. Check the end float of the connecting rod big end bearing side with a feeler gauge. 
which should be 0.18 to 0.33 millimeters. Turn the engine up. Check the piston protrusion above the cylinder block surface with a stand and dial gauge. It should be within 0.28 to 0.58 millimeters. Turn the engine vertical. Fit the oil seal on the retainer and then, with the rear of the engine facing upward, fit the assembly on the crankshaft oil seal journal with gasket. Tighten all the bolts to a torque to 1.8 kg meter. Mount the dial gauge on the end of the crankshaft. Rotate the crankshaft and check the runout of seal, which should not exceed 0.38 millimeters. Install the gear of a hydraulic pump aligning the dowel. Tighten the bolt with flat spring washer with 5.8 inch socket to a torque of 6 to 8 kg meter. Apply Araldite to the camshaft hydraulic pump drive gear cover and fit the same. Fit the plate on the engine and tighten the bolts of 9 by 16 inch with washer to a torque of 1.8 to 2.5 kg meter. Now, align the mounting bolts hole of crankshaft with the flywheel. Drive home the bolts with a socket of 13 by 16 inches and an impact wrench and a torque to 23 kg meter. Check the run out of flywheel with dial gauge and magnetic stand. It should be within 0.127 millimeters. Now, assemble the oil pump and fit the same with intermediate shaft and two mounting bolts of 9 by 16 inches and a gasket and tighten to a torque of 4.5 to 5 kg meter. Apply shellac and put a gasket on the oil sump and fit the sump on the block. Tighten all the bolts to a torque of 3 to 3.5 kg meter. Turn the engine up. To align the timing gear marks, rotate the crankshaft so that timing mark stamped on the gear is at about 11 o'clock position. Rotate the camshaft gear at 9 o'clock position approximately. Install idler gear, taking care that timing marks on crank gear and cam gear are aligned with idler gear. Slide idler gear home with adopter and bolt. Torque the bolt to the torque of 14 to 14.5 kg meter. Check the end float of 0.025 to 0.28 millimeters with feeler gauge. Fit the FI pump assembly with four mounting bolts. Then, fit the gear assembly with plate FI pump and three bolts and tighten them. Ensure the timing mark on FI pump gear matches with the timing mark of idler gear. Fit the cylinder on the crankshaft. Fit an oil seal on the front cover. Apply shellac and put a gasket on the cover. Fit the cover on the housing and tighten the bolts and torque to 2 to 2.5 kg meter. Fit the spacer passing through the oil seal and then fit the wood rough key. Fit crank pulley on crankshaft with bolt. And tighten the same to 21 to 25 kg meter torque. Discard the valves if not serviceable. Then ream the guides to oversize to suit the stem. Then insert the valves and respective guides. Slide valve stem seal cap onto the valve. Assemble the valve with spring retainer and keys with the help of a spring pressing tool.
check valve face depth from cylinder head face with a dial gauge and stand. The depth for all valves should be 1.5 millimeters. Check the valve with kerosene or petrol to detect leakage. Place a cylinder head gasket on the block. Then the cylinder head assembly on the cylinder block. Replace the push rods to the exact place where they were removed from. Assemble the rocker arm on the shaft. Fit rocker arm assembly on the cylinder head, aligning push rods. Ensure that the cut mark on the rocker shaft is facing upward for proper oil supply to rocker assembly. Tighten the bolts of the cylinder head and rocker shaft assembly to a torque of 23 kg meter. Crank the engine to adjust tappet clearance. Bring the zero mark on the flywheel coinciding with the arrow on the plane. In this position, the first piston should be at TDC in compression stroke. Then, adjust valve clearance on one, two, four and five valves. After this, rotate the crankshaft once again. This time, the first piston will be at exhaust stroke. In this position, adjust the remaining three and six valve tappet clearance. Fit exhaust manifold with gasket and tighten the nuts to a specified torque. Fit intake manifold with gasket. Fit injector washer and cork gasket on each injector. And then fit all the injectors in the cylinder head and tighten the bolts. Fit the overflow pipe on the injector with copper washer and banjo bolts. Fit all the high pressure pipes connecting injectors and then clamp the pipes properly. Assemble the water pump. Take care that the impeller flushes with the housing assembly with retaining bolt. Mount the power steering pump with three bolts and hydraulic pump with four bolts. Fill fresh engine oil and fit new engine oil and hydraulic filter. More accurate fuel injection timing is set by spill cutoff method using swan neck pipe on number one delivery valve holder after removing the delivery valve spring and peg. Remove the cover fuel injection pump gears. Take a screwdriver. Rotate the engine clockwise and observe the zero mark on the flywheel aligning with the arrow mark on the rear plane. Now turn it and bring the flywheel mark of 16 degrees aligned with arrow. This is compression stroke of first piston close to TDC. This can be ensured by free rotations of the push rods of first and second rockers. Remove the delivery valve holder after loosening the holder clamp. Remove the delivery valve spring. And peg. and refit the delivery valve holder.
fit swan neck pipe. Fit fuel supply pipe from a diesel tank kept at a height for the diesel to enter into the FI pump with brevity. Insert a piece of cloth in the timing inspection hole towards the idler gear to protect against any part or tool falling in the timing housing accidentally. Loosen the three pump gear mounting bolts using half inch socket and handle. Rotate the pump shaft hub clockwise using 19 millimeter socket and handle. Keep operating the hand priming pump. A stream of diesel will flow through the swan neck pipe. A point will come when the diesel stream will reduce into drops. Carefully turn the pump shaft hub further clockwise till the point where drops fall at interval of about 15 seconds. Holding the pump hub at this position, tighten the pump gear mounting bolts securely. Recheck timing by turning the crankshaft anti-clockwise. Drops will appear from the swan neck pipe. Now turn the shaft clockwise till the drops reduce again to about a drop every 15 seconds. Remove the swan neck pipe. Remove the delivery valve holder. Before fitting the delivery valve, operate the priming pump, allowing some diesel to escape to remove any dirt or paint particles. Refit the delivery valve peg. And spring. Tighten the delivery valve holder to a torque of 4 to 4.5 kg meter. Do not over tighten it. Fuel injection timing can also be set with the help of a pre stroke gauge. Bring the flywheel marking of 16 degree BTDC position as done earlier. Remove the hand primer. Remove the inspection cover of the fuel injection pump. Insert a clean piece of cloth in the timing inspection hole. Remove the three bolts and the plate of the pump gear with a half inch socket and handle. And mount the pre-stroke gauge with a dial indicator. The pointer of the gauge should rest on the tappet of the fuel injection pump. Rotate the pump shaft hub anti-clockwise using the 19 mm socket and handle and bring the tappet of the fuel injection pump at BDC position and set the dial indicator to zero. Now, rotate the pump shaft hub clockwise, simultaneously observing the reading on the dial indicator. When the dial indicator shows free stroke value of 3.55 to 3.6 millimeters, stop rotating the shaft hub. Refit the three mounting bolts with plate with half inch socket and handle. Rechecking can be done by turning the shaft anti-clockwise by travel permissible by the gear backlash. Now, turn the shaft clockwise again by the amount of backlash. The dial indicator should show the value of free stroke set earlier. If not, loosen the three bolts and slightly rotate the pump shaft. Reset the pre stroke value and tighten the bolts. Remove the pre stroke gauge and put the inspection cover. Put the gasket on the cylinder head cover assembly. Then, replace on the cylinder head, tighten the bolts. Mount the engine on the tractor. Connect electrical connections and start the engine. Run the engine and check for oil pressure at idle RPM first, and then at high RPM. Check for leakages and abnormality. Advise the customer for running in precautions. The procedure of engine dismantling, checking and reassembling for all the new generation farm track engines is the same as of FT60 tractor engines. For correct specification for each engine, please refer service repair manual.